Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Serene, and today's video is all about my goal and how I want to do a low buy or no buy. And I'm gonna go through all the details of that. You guys might have seen in my other videos where I hinted at possibly doing a no buy, like it's not something that is totally out of the blue for me if you've been paying attention, but I wanna share with you my low buy and my rules, my goals, and why I'm doing it, mainly to hold myself accountable. Like once I put it out there and people know about it, I'm definitely more accountable to myself and my goals. I'm very nervous about making this video mainly because this is one of the hardest things I struggle with. For the last years from end of 2017 all through 2018, I was really trying to get back on a healthier lifestyle and fitness plan. I've always been very active. I talk about my weight loss journey for the last year on Instagram as well as on my blog. Now that I finally am in a place where I feel like my fitness and health is in a better place, definitely, and it's still a continuous journey. I'm still trying to lose like that last 10 pounds and gain muscle and become stronger. And I am definitely on the path to success there and I've developed healthier habits. I want to reevaluate and kind of see what my goal is for this next year. And the next year is definitely, I was reevaluating our finances, the way I spend our money, the way I feel a need to shop, and how it affects me emotionally, mentally, and why I do these things. And that's really where I've been struggling for my entire life. And it's been on and off the last few years where I'll be very good for a few months, but then it just falls apart. Making this video makes me very nervous because I have to share a lot of things about myself personally in a different way and it opens me up for judgment obviously because I'm online but I'm hoping that by doing this one it obviously will hopefully hold me accountable but two we open up a dialogue because I don't think I'm alone in these feelings. Obviously, I'm not alone because I discovered a couple channels, which I'm going to share with you, that inspired me and that made me want to take the initiative and share this journey. Because at first, I was going to be like, I'm just going to tell my close friends and family about my no buy slash low buy and my rules. But, you know, my friends and family love me no matter what, and they let me get away with a lot. And I feel like sharing it out here, whether or not you guys forgive me or not, you guys are also very forgiving and very understanding. But I think having this open dialogue with you for the next few months will help me stay on track. But also it can, like, hopefully if you guys feel some of these things that like, just knowing we're not alone, having this community definitely helps hold me accountable for things. I did make very strict notes, but you know me, I make long videos. Okay, shopping and me. I love, love, love shopping. I love it. And it's not something I wanna get rid of, but it is something I need to evaluate and kind of figure out how to have a healthier, better relationship with shopping. My mom and I used to shop together all the time. We spent our time together shopping, eating, and then going and shopping again. That was like a pastime. It was a hobby that I enjoyed doing with my mom. It's something that I grew up doing and it was comforting and it was lovely. And you know, I grew up at South Coast Plaza. So even before I really like bought things, I was going on the carousel repeatedly. I'd go into the toy stores and play with the wooden train tracks as well as like go and buy a rock because I had a huge rock collection. So shopping to me was a pastime. It was something that we did as much as I went to the park. I think I went to the mall more than the park. So it's very much ingrained in who I am as a person. And unfortunately, it's not a healthy mental place that I'm at with it. Shopping from becoming a pastime has definitely become a, I don't feel good about myself or I'm starting to feel a little bit slightly depressed. So I'm gonna go buy something for myself and that will make me feel better. Why is my pal? I don't begrudge her a boyfriend. I really, ooh, I wonder if they have that my size. And I like to call that retail therapy. Retail therapy is a real thing. Unfortunately, it is also incredibly irresponsible and wasteful and it gets out of control for me personally. Some people can have a really great 
management on their retail therapy and that's great and I do believe in treating yourself I do believe in saving for those beautiful pieces that you're looking for or that you've been wanting and coveting I think life is too short we should buy those shoes but I was taking it to the extreme and I've taken it to the extreme Obviously, I've tried to work on this in the past year as well as my health. I started a capsule wardrobe. I purged like 80, 90% of my entire closet and started over. And that did help me for a while on clothing and fashion. However, that did not go into the other things of my life. And that unfortunately... Um, gave me more of an excuse to buy things for my channel, to buy things to review, to overshop on beauty products, to overshop on accessories and things like that. While I love shopping, I have to take a step back and develop a healthier relationship with shopping. There are times when I have gotten a control of my excessive spending and shopping and shopping to feel better and to kind of numb myself from what is actually going on, but I fall off the wagon quite often and quite frequently, and the longer I seem to have a control over it, the harder I fall off that wagon. I need to develop better habits. While coming up with rules for my low buy slash no buy, I've really had to reflect on why I go on these crazy spending sprees or how I will just go online and order things because I want it in that moment. And as much as I hate to say this, a lot of it was passed down from my parents. And I'm not blaming them for this because I understand where it comes from for them. Both my parents were really, really heavy shoppers for different reasons and for different things, but they were heavy, heavy shoppers. My mom didn't necessarily buy a lot of clothes and shoes or beauty products, but she bought a lot of random stuff. And my dad would shop for everything and anything, random tchotchkes, random things. And it was always about collecting or feeling better or passing the time or just feeling secure about it. And I think it comes from the fact that both of them are immigrants. And when they came here, they literally came here with nothing. And having the ability to go shop, having the ability to collect things or to buy things and have things to fill a home really gave them a sense of success and security. And that's how they developed like a home full of stuff. It's also a unhealthy attachment to items and objects. My mom, I feel like towards the end of her life, she definitely detached from that and she realized that objects and and owning things and all these things, she wasn't gonna be able to take it with her as her health declined. So she definitely had a better um, relationship towards the end of her life, but she was also still very much like, um, it felt good for her to go to a shop or go to a store when she was still able to, even going to the grocery store and buying food um, that she didn't necessarily need, because she would buy it for us and hand it off to us, or buying random objects for the home and giving it to us, and us, I mean her children. It made her feel good, I feel like, and it made her feel like she was successful in a way. So that's kind of where I got it from, and I think seeing that, watching that, it's just, it, it it's part of who I am, it's ingrained in who I am, but I have to kind of unlearn some of that because one, I don't really need anything right now, and there are things I will need, and I'll talk about that, and I will buy it for myself, but running two businesses, one of which is very, very, very new, and the other one which is pretty steady, but still very volatile, because essentially I freelance by creating content, and jobs can dry up for a season, or it can be really lucrative one season, and I just have to plan better for working for ourselves and running a small business. And there's other things I wanna do with our money that require a little more planning and saving, and then there are things that like make me happy in for five minutes, which is buy a bunch of stuff that I will forget about literally after I come home. So why am I going on a low buy or no buy? And the reason I'm doing a low buy, no buy is because I will be buying things. It's just part of my job and I don't think saying an actual no buy is realistic and it's almost setting me up for failure so I've made really structured, strict rules. I retail therapy shop too much, which is obvious. I spend without thinking for instant gratification instead of thinking of why I feel the need to buy something. 
So a lot of the times I don't even know I'm doing it, but I'll be walking around and I'll go buy something just because it's an impulsive thing for me to do. Instead of stopping and thinking if I actually want it, what I'm going to use this thing for, and maybe I'm just not feeling very good right now, and instead of dealing with my feelings, I'm shopping. I justify a lot of my shopping because of being on YouTube. And I can go into that more if you guys want, let me know in the comments. But I think it's pretty obvious. I justify having to buy new equipment, having to buy new lighting, having to buy more products to review for you guys, and having to buy it because so-and-so said it was good, and all this stuff. And for the most part, I do need to upgrade my equipment pretty frequently just to keep up with things, and there are things I need to spend money on, like my music subscription to be able to put music in my videos. Um, I do need to pay for like a cloud. I do need to pay for certain services. Those things are justifiable, but some of them aren't. Having a huge makeup collection is almost expected and required the last few years being on YouTube and has made me feel less than if I didn't. So moving into a one bedroom helped me purge a ton of my collection. You guys saw a whole series of me decluttering every part of my makeup collection. You saw it in my closet. I feel like I have to have more if I want to be happy at times. Predominantly beauty blogger slash YouTuber makes me feel like I have to own all these things, that I have to be on every PR list, that I have to keep everything too because everybody else keeps everything and everybody does all these crazy lip swatches and foundation swatches and concealer swatches and I have to keep all of this. And in, if I don't, I'm not successful, which is completely, I know, logically not true, but it's how I feel. I also have been feeling very wasteful. Things that Things end up sitting in my drawers because I see all these possibilities and I see all the video content that I want to create, but they end up just sitting there. Or after I use it for a video, after I review the product, it just ends up sitting there and it rots. Beauty products have a shelf life. I'd like to develop a better relationship with objects. A lot of the times I want to keep things around because of memories attached to them or because of it being limited edition and it was such a coveted item and now I have it. Um, I don't think that's healthy, especially when it comes down to makeup. There are a couple items that my mom had purchased for me and I will never let go of them right now. I'm not ready to let go of them. I won't use them either because they're quite old and probably full of bacteria. But other than that, I don't need to keep around a limited edition eyeshadow palette from five years ago. I'd like to save money, pay off debt, and save for larger purchases that I've had my eye on and have had my heart set on for quite some time. My rules for my low buy. The first thing is the time frame. I think saying I'm going to do a no buy, low buy for the entire 2019 is very daunting for someone like me and very, very scary, especially for what I do for a living. I don't know, all these things come through my head when I say an entire year. So I've broken it down into fiscal quarters and evaluating at the end of each quarter. This is how I work best. It's how I like to approach dieting. It's how I like to approach workouts, is having a set term, achieving that term and reevaluating it and adjusting as we go. Now, obviously, I could say I'm going to do it for the entire year, adjusting at every quarter, but this is how I like to frame it for me to be successful. It's going to be the first fiscal quarter, meaning January 1st, but honestly, really starting today, December 29th, into end of March. That also helps me because that's my capsule wardrobe time frame, so I can start looking at and shopping for my spring capsule wardrobe in March. After a ton of thought, watching a ton of videos and a ton of channels that do no buys or low buys and project pans, here are my rules. No impulse purchases at all. If I want something, I have to come back to it after thinking about it for at least a week. So if I see something in a store that I really want and I think I want it, I'm going to put it down in my wish list of things I want to buy, which is on my phone as well as in my bullet journal. And it has to be a week before I can come back to it and decide whether or not I still want it and want to purchase it. And then we can talk about it after a week. I must add all items that I want to buy onto my wish list, and I cannot buy anything off of my wish list. These two rules will hopefully eliminate any impulse purchases. No beauty purchases unless 
completely out of that item in my collection and in my backup stash. I do not need to purchase any beauty products for the next quarter unless I'm absolutely out of every single type of that item. And most likely I won't run out. No fashion purchases unless absolutely necessary for work or travel and must think about it for a few days before buying. If I travel to somewhere super cold, I just sold my down jacket, which I've had since I moved to New York, um, like over 10 years ago. I don't have a down jacket right now. And if I go somewhere super, super cold, I probably have to go get a down jacket, but I'm not gonna buy it unless I have to get it because I might freeze to death. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can make it work with the things I do own. I do have some heavier coats. Um, I have lots of scarves. I have a winter boot. I have rain boots. I have snow boots. Like I should be pretty good unless I'm going somewhere super cold where I need a full length down jacket. Only thing I can think of right now that I need to purchase if we were to travel. Oh, no, even if we went to Hawaii tomorrow, I have plenty of bathing suits. If I buy anything, I must have five other uses slash occasions for this item. This is more pertaining to household items like if I decide I need a new Silipad for my baking sheet can I think of using it five times yes that is something actually that is a good investment for us because we cook a lot more at home now based on our diet and our lifestyle and we enjoy cooking and my Silipad smells like chicken because it's gross but Chris actually fixed it because he used baking soda and vinegar and really got it clean. So I really don't need it right now. But if I were to want to buy a Silipad, that is something that I could justify purchasing because we cook so much. This pertains more to like household appliances, um, you know, because I know myself and because I took away beauty and fashion, I'll start buying things for the house or I'll start buying things for work or whatever it is. So anything new added to our home must be functional or bring long-term pleasure and joy. I can purchase gifts that are meaningful and well thought out for friends and family for special occasions. I truly enjoy buying people gifts and I'm gonna continue to do that. They're gonna be well thought out um, within reason and within budget though. Sometimes I like to go extreme and I really just can't do that anymore. What can I spend my money on during the next few months? Experiences within reason like going to see a show or a play, museums, if we wanna go take a trip, we can definitely plan out for those things. I tend to think a little bit harder before spending money on those things, which is I think funny, but it's good. I wanna spend my money where I can enjoy my experiences, live my life, um, spend time with those I love, food out with friends within reason. I don't wanna go crazy. I don't wanna like go on all these fancy dinners and spending all this money I just shouldn't be spending on food, but I also want to hang out with my friends and enjoying a meal with a friend is a good idea. Minimal work expenses. Again, like I've mentioned a lot, I tend to justify spending on my channel and building our business, but we have to be careful. There's like a fine line between growing your business and just spending to spend for me. My goals for my low buy. One is to pay down debt. I do have a little bit of credit card debt, which I'd like to pay off completely by the end of the year, if not by the first quarter. The first quarter might be very like, oh, uh, ambitious, but I definitely feel like I can do it within the year. Save money to purchase a new camera and iPad. So I broke my iPad, my iPad was falling apart and then it finally broke like maybe four months ago and Chris has been letting me use his iPad which was older than my old iPad. So that one's pretty much on its last legs, but it's working and I know I've wanted a new iPad for, for many months now but it, I haven't been able to justify such a large purchase because while it is a work expense, because the new iPad I want, I would be able to do cool graphics and edit on it. I would still also use part of it for enjoyment and entertainment. And it's something that I haven't been able to justify because I wanna pay down debt and I also spend my money on all these stupid little things. If I am able to achieve a low buy following all of these rules very strict and we have a good quarter where we are you know hustling and making money and producing content and working with brands that I love then there's no reason I can't treat myself at the end of the first quarter with two items that I've been wanting 
for many, many months, but haven't been able to justify these larger purchases because of how much I spend every month on these not so large purchases that add up to large purchases. So if I'm able to save what I want to save and pay off debt, a portion of my debt, I want to purchase the new camera for the business and the new iPad, mostly for the business, but partially for entertainment as well. I want to use up the products I truly enjoy. And that's like my favorite items. I get overwhelmed and then I feel bad for using the items I really love because when it starts to get down, I feel sad that it's gonna be gone, but that's such a messed up way of thinking about things. Like I should use them up and enjoy them. I wanna purge products I do not love immediately from my home. So if something comes in and I don't love it or I'm trying to get rid of this or I'm trying to use something up and I just don't love it, like why hurt myself? Why torture myself and why waste the space in my home? Just get rid of it. That means hand it off to someone who might enjoy it or um, donate it if it's donatable, like if I can sanitize it. If not, then unfortunately it will go into the trash. Have a better relationship with shopping. I love shopping, but I want to have a better relationship with it where I won't feel guilty and I don't spend money I don't have. PR. So PR is a huge part of my job and a huge perk as well. And there's many, many uh, thoughts on PR and I want to be very, very clear. I am incredibly privileged and grateful for all the PR I receive. But I wanna make it clear on how I receive PR and how I'm going to continue to receive PR moving forward during this time and for as the foreseeable future. I currently only accept PR from brands that I love and want to work with. That has been kind of my rule of thumb for a few years now. I'm on PR lists that I truly enjoy. I will reach out to brands that I would like to build a relationship with as well. So there are new brands that I'm constantly researching and looking for, especially on the indie side and especially on the um, cleaner side. I love, love discovering new brands. So when I see a new brand on Instagram or online or in an article, I, I, I wanna reach out to them and let them know I'm alive, let them know that I would be very interested in testing out their products and that I would love to potentially work with them, but at the very least, I would like to test out their products. In the past, I don't do that very often because I think it's important for brands to know that I'm interested and it helps them know who to maybe send PR to as well. I will accept products for consideration with no expectations from the brand. So a lot of times brands will email me or contact me and ask me if I would be interested in testing out a new product launch or just a new brand in general. I am completely open to that and I've always been very open to that and a lot of the times the reason I'm able to bring you these new indie brands and new product launches is because they emailed us and told us about it. I then ask them a bunch of questions um, and then they answer these questions and if they answer the questions to my satisfaction, I always say, yes, please send in this product for consideration and if I love it, of course I wanna work with you or of course I'll talk about it. Um, but Chris makes very clear that there's nothing that is ever sent in with expectations. The only expectation is that I kind of like look at it even closer. I will only share with you things that interest me. I might still do hauls and unboxings, but it's definitely gonna be on a very more minimalistic way and a more like approachable way. I feel like less like, ugh. I don't even know how to describe that. Doing PR unboxings. And that was in a situation where I was very clear. I don't know what this product is. I'm just opening it and sharing it with you guys. It's like Christmas morning, unboxing everything. And th that was fun for a while, but it's not, it's not what, it's not the message I wanna send out there to you guys. Cause I think it became kind of negative and we all started to feel bad about ourselves. Um, I know watching them, I was like, oh wait, why didn't so-and-so send me that box or oh, I feel like crap because even though I got all these things, I didn't get those things. And I didn't like where that was going mentally or emotionally for myself. So I don't wanna ever put that on you guys either. If PR comes in and I wanna share it with you, it's because I'm excited. This is a new launch, this is cool. Do you guys, are you guys interested? Should I test it out? Let me know. Cause I can't test everything out before it launches. It's just not possible at this point. The way PR works for me is products get sent in from brands I already love and work with so they know that they can send me PR. 
or new brands sending things in for consideration. So I unbox all these things, immediately things that are not my shade, not my skin type, not fitting with my lifestyle, get put into a pile to be gifted to you guys, friends, family, and then, um, or else donation. Then based on that, after getting, after dividing that stuff out, I have a bunch of things that I am interested in. I have two bins for makeup and two bins for skincare. It's actually in that corner over there. You've seen it before in my apartment. And that goes in there to test because I'm interested in it. That sometimes doesn't happen. I just don't have enough time or enough faces or enough skin or hair. But I'm genuinely interested and I do want to get to it and it gets moved into these bins. Then the dresser and my bathroom is where I'm testing. And those are the products I'm rotating and trying to get through because I either love it or I'm trying to test it. That's kind of the system I have. And I'm hoping that with this no buy and with this full transparency that we're able to kind of move this system along a little bit faster. And hopefully I don't forget about these four bins because the four bins, to be completely honest, get full. And then I have to purge those four bins and kind of be like, okay, I'm not going to get to it at this point. My inspirations for this. So even though I've been evaluating my life and kind of like reflecting upon who I am as a human being, I know deep, right? I had some major inspiration on YouTube and these two women really made me love YouTube beauty a little bit more because I kind of was straying away from YouTube beauty. Like I watch a very, very small group of beauty and fashion YouTubers. I definitely love my lifestyle people more. Anna Louise Poston, did I say your last name right? I have a way of like not pronouncing people's names right and not pronouncing anything right in my life. She did a no by year. And I found her thanks to one of my viewers who shared her channel with me when I asked for you guys to give me suggestions on channels to watch. Found her and fell in love. She did an entire no buy year and she documented everything. She's very eloquent, very detailed, and very, very honest. I also love that she started her YouTube channel literally to hold herself accountable for her no buy year. So she's wrapping up her no buy year and I relate a lot to her and I'm very, very inspired by her. So if you'd like some inspiration, check her out. And then Kelly Goosh. Kelly does a lot of no buys, but she's not currently doing any no buys because her relationship with shopping for beauty products has definitely improved since starting her channel. She also does a lot of project pans. So project pan is something I'm very fascinated by and interested by. And Kelly has been a huge inspiration for me to do my own first ever project pan, which will be in an upcoming video. So in conclusion, I've decided to also do a project pan thanks to Kelly and I'm going to make a whole separate video about that and kind of Kelly's tips and how I'm going to approach my project pan, which really scares me. I'm truly hoping that I can get a handle on my need to retail shop therapy when I'm feeling down about myself or when I'm just feeling down. And I'm hoping that by doing this low buy, I will have more of an idea of when I'm starting to feel sad because I definitely feel like I'm very in tune with my physical state, my physical body at this point. Um, I know when I'm starting to feel run down and have to take care of myself. I know when I'm starting to catch a cold and what I need to do for that. I wanna be able to do that for me, myself mentally. Sometimes I don't even realize I'm doing it because I'm just mildly, depre mildly depressed. I'm not in my like full on depression mode yet. And I'm hoping that by eliminating retail therapy, I will be able to see the beginnings of a downward spiral. Whereas now I don't see the beginning and I end up in the downward spiral. I'm very, very nervous about this because while I feel like I'm really disciplined about work, about health and fitness and diet, this is one area in my life that I have had no discipline with. And even if I am successful maybe a few months, I will fall and I will fall off the wagon so hard. So I'm very, very scared because it's 
it's really the one place in my life I have no self-control or discipline with. I'm also really worried about my channel because so much of my channel grew on the fact that I was shopping and doing all these hauls, buying these products and getting the products firsthand to review, review, for review. And I didn't wanna have to spend $10,000 a year on beauty products. Um, not, I'm just using that as a number, but I just, I really started to feel resentful of myself and these habits. And it's scary to say that because my channel grew from a place of shopping and hauling and new, 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 bye, 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 yay, 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 you know? And I don't know how I feel about being so different, like approaching things so differently as a beauty YouTuber. And I know I've talked about how like I'm more than just beauty. Um, I think beauty is all encompassing and I truly am more interested in other things, but I always love skincare and beauty, obviously, and that's where we started. And I don't see that going anywhere necessarily, but it is scary to like approach it slightly different because I think people get such gratification from shopping, even watching them. I do feel the pressure that being on YouTube, you almost have to be excessive to be successful. And I don't like that concept. And I'm hoping that we can change that. And Hannah seemed to have a really good start to her channel by doing a no buy. So it'll be really interesting to see her grow as she starts to buy things again, as she continues to grow in the space. So I'm really excited for her and I'm really, really rooting for her because I think she can make a lot of changes in this industry. So I hope you'll support me on this journey and I hope that some of the things I talked about you can relate to. At the end of the day, There'll be a lot of content here either way. Um, I'm just trying to find a way for it to make sense for me while I do like a no buy and I wanna document it and share it with you guys in case you are interested in joining me or in case you were doing it. I know a couple of my viewers actually were on no buys. Um, jo is one of them and I know she's ending it in January so I wanna know if she actually ends up buying a lot of these things she kept adding to her wish list. I wanna be more mindful of my spending. I think we could all be more mindful of our spending and I'm really excited for this journey I'm very very scared and nervous but I hope you will continue to follow me along if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you click that subscribe button I will also link some other videos that you might enjoy at the end card as well as in the description box so that you might check out some of my other videos and then subscribe if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or in Christine's world smash that like button <laughs> sorry every time I say give that video a give this video a thumbs up I think of Christine telling me how we should smash that like button don't know what I'm talking about watch our collab for the best of uh our favorite 2018 beauty products until next time I hope to see you guys right back here for new videos three times a week I don't have an upload schedule just yet so just make sure you're subscribed with your post notifications turned on I also do announce new videos over on my Instagram stories which I have linked in the description box check out my Instagram and I will see you guys in my next video bye